Hey, it's your sister Roland. All I need is a few minutes. So we have this case coming out of Davenport, Iowa, and it took place in July of 2020 when we, where we have this 10-year-old young girl by the name of Briasia Terrell, whose life was taken allegedly by Henry Dickinson, Dickens, whatever his name is, because he's the one who's on trial. He was the last one to have been with this little girl. Now, before we even get into this, it was so many people that failed this little girl. So many things could have been done to save this little girl. And these type of cases, this, this is the type of cases why people say, oh, that can be a God. Oh, they don't believe in God because if God existed, things like this wouldn't have happened. Why does he let these things happen? Okay, God, I always say, does not go against everything nobody's free will God has given everybody free will to decide to do the right thing and the wrong thing evil or good he gives he gives that decision up to you he tells you he wants you to choose good but he's not gonna force you to do it because if God wants he could make everybody just do what they are supposed to do do the right thing all the time but then why would he do that he wants you to freely do it out of your own volition just do it. But you know, many people have a graven image of God that, hey, you know, God, for him to be God, for me to believe him, for me to serve him, oh, he's supposed to do this, like that, like this. No. God, <laughs> God exists all by himself. Nobody made God. There are his ways we will, we don't understand them. And many people could say, oh, why God didn't do this, nothing to save him? Well, I guess he was supposed to come down and, you know, stay, Henry Dickens, stop. But there was people that had opportunities to say something, to do something, so that this little girl could be here today. I don't even know how I even fell upon this case, because I was watching something totally different about, about what's her name, is? Judge Hatchet. And I guess my phone was on autoplay. I don't even know how it gets on autoplay. And then this case came up. I didn't even know about this case, but within the past 24 hours, I've been, I have came, become well known of this case. And I literally cried for this little girl, how, you know, and it's like this little girl left, left a void a huge void yes there's people in her family is to blame that's to blame it's not and it's not only the mother but this little girl i felt like she was gonna do something great she's gonna be something great she's gonna leave an impact on this world the fact that how she left this world and then so many people came together to find her and then when they eventually find her when the police chief was giving the information you know, he broke down. He broke down. Because when you come and when you actually not listen to clips, when you actually listen to the trial and the different testimonies, it's so sad. This girl was not protected enough. It was like too many people was too trusting. Too many people were too afraid. That's why this little girl isn't here today. And it's so unfortunate. Anyway, we're going to give you a gist of people who, some people, if you know about the story, okay, good for you. But for other people that not may not know of this story, you know, what led up to where we are now. I, I'm not sure exactly where the trial is, but they haven't given, you know, the verdict and the sentence and hasn't come in yet. <sighs> so... The, pros the prosecutor in this case, I have to give her, I mean, give her props. 
this lady, because before she, you know, they usually give an opening statement, right? She, before she gave an opening, opening statement, she gave a timeline. The timeline was like an hour and 13 minutes. I didn't see her have any notes. She told us the timeline way before the things happened, you know, before things happen, happened in July, right before, you know, in June, I think the mother was going to some type of cookout this man was having. She probably was going with his son because she had a son with um, Henry Dickens, whatever his name is. And then she led you, she led us up to when she met, I mean, met up with this guy because the son saw him, saw his car, and he was like, oh, he want to be with his dad, go want to go with his dad. And I don't know, maybe sometimes, you know, especially as single mothers, and you chose to have a child with somebody or children with somebody, and this person is not actively, actively involved in the child's life, whether financially, emotionally, physically. And sometimes we tend to be, you know, feel bad and... Most of the time where we should be parents, we let the child decide or we let the child say this is what they want. Knowing that children don't know. That's why they need to be protected. They don't know, you know. All they see is fun and different things like that. But you see further. That's why you are the parent. So he expressed that he wanted to go with his dad he wanted to spend some time with his dad so you know the mom made a u-turn this is going to be one of different u-turns she's going to have to make and that u-turn basically when you look at it changed the rest of her life that u-turn that she made had she not made that u-turn i wouldn't have been making this video today there wouldn't have been no trial but that u-turn what changed her life, her children's life, and so many people's lives. I just thought about that. So anyway, they she talked to him and saying, you know, he want the little boy wanted to spend time with him. You know, in the trial they was trying to call the child D L, but they kept on saying the child's name. Uh, whatever. So he said, okay, yeah, I don't know, if she. Because in reality, the man never was around anyway. He was never around. She, he want, he did, he came just like the grandmother said, he came around when he wanted to. He was, according to the prosecutor's, you know, timeline, he didn't contribute really financially or whatever to the child's life. So I, just like another thing, like, you know, you, you messed up, you didn't think so, you tried to, in a sense, push the child on the guy, but this is a grown man. You know you have a child. You know this child needs to be taken care of. You know this child needs time to be spent with them. You know they need money. So if people shouldn't have, and nobody should have to have to force you to spend time with your child to take care of your child. You should know that. So if somebody has to do that, that's where we go wrong as certain women because you know we don't want nobody to call us bitter and stuff like that or you keep in a way you don't want the the father in the child's life some kids don't certain men that you have ch children with you already made the mistake already because you didn't vet the person we didn't vet the person or whatever some kids are better off there are certain people that you have children with the child is better off without the father unfortunately because of who this person is. You didn't see before. <sighs> anyway. So he expressed. And then he's like. He's, okay he'll take the little boy. So that was July 8th. Um, I guess. I'm not sure if. I think she had told the mom briefly. Or whatever. But it didn't seem like it was really planned. It didn't seem like it was really planned. You know. To take this child. And before I even get into that, you know, now the trial is going on. He's been in jail from since 2020. After this trial is done, everybody is going to have time to sit down and come to terms. The part that they played, the things that they didn't do, what they didn't say, they're going to have to sit and realize how they did not do 
enough or did nothing in some cases to save this little girl's life. Everybody's going to come because now, you know, this trial is like a distraction. But very soon, everybody from even from this Henry Dickens guy. Because in the uh, police, when the police came to interview him, because, you know, he was supposed to go to the police station, never went because he couldn't go because he was a registered S.O. What? So he already know they was going to ask him why a child is in your house in the first place. You're not even supposed to be near a child. That's why, one of the reasons why he didn't go. But anyway, like the lady that took the call, she's like, a 10-year-old is missing and it didn't seem like people were, I mean, like fervent, let's say fervent enough in knowing how they will locate this child. So when the guy with the police, the, that police was, that police was something else. The police did more. The police bent down, looking under the bed, looking for the child because everybody else seemed like, seems to me like they didn't care. Henry came out with the little kid and then this is the thing. They have the little kid. It's like this, these kids, it seemed to me these kids run stuff because the child, the, ch the little boy was supposed to be in the home and then maybe if the police wanted to speak to him, they could get the little bit of boy who came out with his dad. And then he already say, oh, I don't know anything. The last person who was with the little girl was the boy. He already thrown the little boy under the bus. And then he don't know his Henry Dickens. That's what I'm talking about. He don't know his phone number. He don't know where he lived. And then when the police ask him, you know, who this person is, say, that, is that your girlfriend? He say, oh, that's my friend. So this lady thinking, Andrea, thinking that's her boyfriend, man say, you just his friend. So they are, he just thrown, he don't know nothing. He just putting the blame, trying to get all the attention away from him and then throwing everybody else under the bus in a, in a sense because he don't know anything. That's like a red flag. That's a red flag to me. And then he trying to play victim in a sense. Oh, he, he, he getting upset because... Aisha, the mom, is snapping at him. Of course she's going to snap at him. Snap at you. You was the one who's supposed to be watching over her child. She can't snap at Adria because she really don't know her like that. They only met at one of the cookouts or whatever. And he's getting upset because Andrea, I mean Aisha, is snapping at him. Okay. Now let me backtrack to the girlfriend, Andrea. She said she's usually a heavy sleeper. However, this night, this is another way of God trying to wake somebody up. Come on, something is going on. You guys need to pay attention. She got up in the middle of the night because she needed to pee. She got up in the middle of the night, she needed to pee. And she noticed that he was gone. And I don't know... I think, yes, she had to pass in the bedroom to go to the bathroom. I think that's how the structure of the home is. She noticed that the little girl wasn't there. It seemed like the little girl wasn't there. And she actually went to touch the bed and saw that she wasn't there. And he wasn't there. So that was kind of weird to her. So it bothered her. Because she would say, ah, oh, something he probably took her home. You know, explain away your intuition. But it bothered her. She couldn't go to sleep. And she just sat there in the dark. While sitting there in the dark, she hears somebody, you know, opening up the door slowly, you know, trying not to make too much noise. And she saw it was Henry. Asking Henry, what's going on or whatever, you know, where is the little girl? And then she said he wasn't answering any questions. And then even the defense was saying, why you didn't ask where's Briasia, what happened to her and stuff like that. In my opinion, my opinion, maybe it's whatever conversation that they had when she, he saw that she was awake and then she saw that he was coming in late three, it was 3.30 because remember she was, she was trying to call him. She couldn't get in contact with him. And she looked at, his, like, looked at her phone, it was 3.30. And then, you know, that's when he was coming in. So whatever conversation that they had, she already knew, in my opinion, 
I'm not saying this is fact. She already knew not to question that man. Because obviously you felt, she said she felt uneasy. Her stomach was whatever. But she didn't ask the questions that needed to be asked. And then when she looked out, she saw the little girl in the white shirt, the big, large white shirt. And, you know, in the stuff that she went, saw that she, when she went to sleep. So she kind of, kind of felt a little better because she saw the girl. 3 30 in the morning she still didn't ask where you going with them people kids did you call her mom did her mom ask for you because obviously it was something that was said or something that she understood she better don't ask him no questions